this edition of On Me Sunday Mornings. My name is Julia Dudley Najib along with Lennis Najib. And we are happy to bring you a jam-packed episode, I guess we say that every week, Yes. of news and local news and everything that's happening throughout the Valley. And know that if you want to send your news and events that are happening from Madeira to Larry, Modesto, Merced, throughout the Central Valley, please send us an email, media at AMPTV Now. That's media at AMPTV Now. And for this episode, we're going to be showing an excerpt of Valley Black Talk Radio. It was their first show on 1680 AM, back on the air. They were on the air, of course, for several years on 88.1 FM. Now we've moved to AM, where it's not public radio anymore. Mm -hmm. You're talking about uh, having to make sure you have the advertisers and the monies to keep it going. Yes, Mel and Jewel did an excellent did job. An excellent and they backed on the scene. They're back in their element. Yes, it was exciting to watch them, the bubbly laughter. Yes, and yes. And the deep voice of Mel talking about And the about news, the, the hard news and information. And the politics that he's going into, mm -hmm. the political side of it, and getting us involved in that and the voting aspects of it. So it was really inspiring, you know. That was definitely watch. the fun part. Yes. So we hope that you continue to listen to us. On Me Sunday Morning always plays the first hour. Mm -hmm. It's the rebroadcast that we have from this show that airs on the 1680 AM from 8 to 9 PM mm -hmm. and then from 9 to 12. Uh, or from 9 to 10, you have myself and Joel. And then from 10 to 12, you have news mixed with a little bit of gospel. How did oh, you like that oh, gospel? The gospel favorite? was out of this world. Yeah. The singing Mel, was He great. picked some good songs. Oh, yes. Yeah. It was yeah. wonderful. It's wonderful. And so, again, 1680 AM, you can listen to us every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And you can listen to us online, 1680 now. That's 1680 now. On this episode, after we watch that excerpt of Valley Black Talk Radio, we will then meet, myself and Lennis are going to be commenting on the latest news mm -hmm. headlines, all the things that are hitting in the black news headlines from mm -hmm. the root.com to the GRIO to News One. And we'll be talking about those issues. This issue has been brought to you by... Um, local California, um, Paul Pearson. He's an excellent chef, isn't yes. he? Yes. So we chef. are so grateful that Chef Paul Pearson is one of our sponsors for this edition of our news. Uh -huh. So I guess we'll start with our California local news, and you'll be shocked by this. But according to the California Attorney General, they report that and reveals that there's a racial divide when it comes to the truancy rate. Wow. And usually the educational system does not like to have data given to the to the public based on racial divide. But since it's becoming such a big problem, they're realizing they have to talk about it. Yes, it's over 250,000 students. Really? Yeah, 250,000 students, students missed 10 percent or more during mm -hmm. the 2013-2014 school year. Roughly, that's about 18 more, 18 school days, I would say. There's about 37% of black students mm -hmm. that's missing are truant from right. school. So that's quite a bit of a huge number. Especially when you're talking about 30% of black elementary students that were sampled that were very truant. Now, truancy, I guess we should kind of define that. And oh, I, I, let me clarify 73,000 black elementary students mm -hmm. were truant last school year. Yes. Right? That's okay. correct. That's 73,000. So the California law, of course, defines truancy and they define it as the following that you're absent, arriving 30 minutes or more late to school mm -hmm. without correct. a valid excuse. Yes. So that's we want correct. to make sure you know what truancy is. Mm -hmm. And they found that students who miss 10% or more of the school year without a good reason are considered chronically truant. So then you mm -hmm. get into the behavioral issues because of it. Yes. A lot of it is causing um, a student, especially they said in kindergarten, also in the first grade, are having a hard time just coming to school right. due to poverty. Mm -hmm. It was one of the issues. About and the also in the neighborhood. In the neighborhood. Okay. Yeah, a lot of them are afraid of whatever they've seen at a young age. And so, um, one, one teacher, uh, um, said that because of their clothes, the clothing was too They're dirty. Embarrassed. They're embarrassed. So they don't come to school because they might have dirty shoes. <laughs> no, dirty shirt. Oh, dirty shirt. Well, dirty <laughs> shoes too. I mean, so, the, the little things that yes. we feel that young kids at that age are not cognizant of and they very much are cognizant. So do you feel that it's going to affect them in their reading? especially at that level? They talk about how that's affecting the reading, and that is very much the issue. Mm -hmm. And that's why Attorney General Kamala Harris is trying to push for the state to adopt a system that tracks the absentee and rates of individual students, but finds a solution to it. How oh, can okay. we help these students? Because the research is it's overwhelming, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's terrible. And they talk about California, what, $46 billion a year wow. that the dropout costs. And so that's... Well, $1 billion of it goes to juvenile, juvenile crime. crime, so... so. 
Yeah, that's a billion dollars. That's a billion lot dollars of going to the juvenile crime. So. so. Anyways, there's going to be overhaul in the California school system. Again, normally they don't do the data based on race. This time they've had to because they're realizing mm -hmm. it's an issue. Yes. So I'm glad that at least California is acknowledging that and taking it to the, the taking it to the next level. Yes, that's correct. Meanwhile, let me tell you why you should like Sesame Street. I used to watch Sesame Street when I was young. Me too. I am not ashamed. I love Sesame Street to this day. I love my Big son Bird. watched Sesame Street. Big Bird is my favorite. Well, film. I love Big Bird. I love Elmo. And I had to also sit through my son, loved Elmo, all the Elmo dolls, everything mm -hmm. was Elmo. <laughs> so Sesame Street continues to teach black kids how to love their skin they're in. Mm. And they even have a song. And because of the head writer and puppeteer, mm -hmm. Joey Mazzarino, his daughter, Segi, is from Ethiopia, four years old. Mm -hmm. And because, think about all the things that are out there in the media when it comes to culture and how we look on TV doesn't always represent the background of our culture. Mm -hmm. So he saw that he wanted his four-year-old to feel mm -hmm. proud of herself yeah. and many other kids, not just his daughter, but other kids as well. So there's a song called I Love My Hair and it's dedicated to her and also to the other kids. Mm -hmm. And one of the verses says this, don't need a trip to the beauty shop because I love what I got on top. Mm -hmm. And everything he says, everything in that song is what I want to say to my daughter. I'm sure a lot of us want to say that mm -hmm. to our children. And again, we see so many media icons where from the hair being straightened or the hair being, you know, what some people considered a European hairdo. We saw what the uh, mm -hmm. our, our army was yes. when we had to talk about the challenges with hair and what they went through. So mm -hmm. it's good to see that Sesame Street, who has been doing this for many years, by the way. This is not the only time. Now, to have her going into... Um, I love my hair. It was a beautiful way of expressing his care and love for his daughter. Sure. And that's going to be seen for many years to come. Way back when she become older, she's going to see the love that he has for his daughter by expressing it in that song. So and I even better, they have what Oscar winning actress from mm -hmm. 12 Years a Slave, Nyango. Lupita Nyongo, yes. that was with Elmo mm -hmm. in the clip. And you see that as we're uh, watching on the screen or talking about it. And so she's talking to the kids about the skin they're in. Mm -hmm. And what better person to talk about that who went through the same challenges as yes. well? She went through some very inspiring challenges, especially in the movie 12 Years a Slave and also in her own life. Um, dealing with the issue of dark skin. Right. And so. she was at a luncheon where she expressed that with the essence yes. last year. And one thing she says is skin comes in lots of beautiful shades and colors. Mm -hmm. And that's what she says to Elmo. <laughs> beautiful brown color. So I like that. I, you know, mm -hmm. kudos to Sesame Street. Yes. You know, keeping it real, keeping the message real. Okay. You know, there's a historic unveiling of the Frederick Douglass portrait at Governor uh, Mansion in, in Maryland. And if you're looking at the picture that we have there on screen, you'll see Governor Martin O'Malley and Maryland's, uh, of course, First Lady, mm -hmm. Katie O'Malley, artist uh, Simi Knox, Eddie and Sylvia Brown, Susan Taylor, who we got to interview oh, a yes. few years back, yes. editor -in -chief, former editor-in-chief of uh, Essence, mm -hmm. and her husband, mm -hmm. and also Ted Mack, chairman of the Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture. Yes. So. And I think the artist, was this the first one that, um, I don't know, if it, was he one of the first artists that was commissioned to do? Yes, he was the very first African American that was commissioned. To hang walls and governor's by residence. By presidential candidate okay. from that, that time. Yes, okay. that's true. And we're going to have more news like this after the Valley Black Talk radio excerpt. We're going to watch that first in a 20-minute excerpt about some of the upcoming things like the election that's going to be taking place November 4th, the local mm -hmm. elections. And, you know, Mel and Jewel and myself talk a little bit about that. So you'll see that excerpt. And after that, you'll, we'll talk about some of the latest in the headline, headline news. So we'll be right back. You're watching On Me Sunday Mornings. AMPTV is proud to bring you a combined effort of all the black media sources in the Valley. Stay up or set your DVR for AMPTV programming on KC24 from 1 a.m. to 2.30 a.m. Let us be your source for what's happening in the black community. Saturday at 1 a.m. on KC24. U.S. Med has great news for anyone living with diabetes. If you have Medicare, private insurance, or prescription drug coverage, U.S. Med will ship a new glucose meter right to your home. And shipping is free. My new meter uses only a speck of blood, so it's less painful than my previous meter. If you have Medicare, private insurance, or prescription drug coverage, you're covered with U.S. Med. We're welcoming new patients, even if your current provider can't supply you anymore. 
I don't even have to test on my fingers anymore. I can test on my hand or forearms, and it's more accurate than my old meter. So call US Med today, and you'll have a choice of two great meters. One that actually speaks your results, or a meter so small it fits in the bottle of strips. Act now, and US Med will include a free prescription discount card. We'll also send you a free diabetes card. We'll also send you an opportunity. So call US Med today. You'll be glad you did. One new media expression, On Me, brings you a repeat broadcast of On Me Sunday mornings from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. every Sunday, followed by live radio with Valley Black Talk Radio from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. on 1680 a.m. Here's every Sunday from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. on 1680 a.m. One new media expression, On Me. African-American sculptor and multimedia artist Mildred Howard will be featured at the Fresno Museum's Council of 100 Distinguished Women Artists for 2014 from September 26 to January 4th, 2015. For more information, go to fresnoartmuseum.org. Save the date, Saturday, September 27th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Jack and Jill of America Incorporated Fresno Chapter will have waffles, wings, and blingy things at the African American Museum, located on 1857 Fulton Street in Fresno, California. Vendor booths, tickets are available. Call or text for more information, 559-803-5182. To submit your event to the AMPTV Community Calendar for consideration, sign up as a member at dbtradio.org. It's free, and post your event on the online calendar, dbtradio.org. People are scared to speak up, and you cannot have discussion when people are scared to speak up. Let's have a discussion. Let's not just throw people away like that. These athletes, in particular, have spent their whole, what, at least high school, since high school, practicing and training to get to this point. And now we're just going to throw them away. What is Ray Rice going to do for a living? Well, we back to if that? I were him, what I would have... Or Adrian Peterson, you know, yeah. if they let him go. Yeah, well, Adrian's not going to go anywhere because he's, he's way more valuable than he's... Well, I don't know, that's my opinion. And you guys think that's... Is, 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 is that part of He's on his way to the Hall of Fame. Is that part of why they could release Ray Rice, though? He's maybe not as popular... Uh, I'm sorry, as no. valuable a player? Because mm, all think kinds of things of come into it. Now we're getting into our yeah. blacks and athletics. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. I, I think that's part of it. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to ask about, too, because that, that's very interesting that... These, these young men are African Americans, and we don't hear of any other group being uh, identified in such a manner of right. being. They're never not, pointed out, but there are issues that are going on. And, and, yeah, in family situations like that. I mean, you know. Now, so how are they held discreet then? Why is it that a lot of African American athletes somehow get in the media? Like, well, as I think that's part of uh, this, the, the history of this country. I mean, the majority look, culture. Rules. It's not. It's just not limited to athletics. I mean, it, it, it transcends all all society. You're gonna find that same uh, situation where. African American males, in particular, are going to be identified as, as people that are feared or, or, or should be feared, and uh, you know, something we have to deal with as, 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 a, as a people and as a nation. We have to deal with. I, I also believe that a lot of the problem that, that the president is having is strictly because of the fact that he's an African American, not because he's done. So anything no one's going to admit to that, and I don't think. Most, no, of course they're not. Right. But now, he's not going to say anything to it until after he leaves off. I'll bet you he's going to write a book afterwards, and he's going to explain to folks how much that played in his administration mm -hmm. or during his administration, his race. Right now, he's not going to say anything because he's got a you know he's got Finesse. another year, he's and, got yeah, to to another year and a half to get to move through this, and then you know it's going to be <laughs> very interesting to see how it. Uh, Change it. I just want to say one more thing on the sports, though. Mm -hmm. What what happened with the cold owner? Right? Okay, so he was pulled over for DWI or whatever they call it in their state, uh -huh. DUI or what. Uh -huh. Is He still owns the Colts as far as I know, right? Oh, yeah. Did he not breach the NFL morality clause? Yeah, but he's the owner of the company. He's not, he doesn't play so, the So it's only the players, there only, the, you go. only the workers that there are subject is, to the morality the clause, yeah. not the owners. Mm -hmm. What they about have the coaches? A, they have a league all of their own. I'll say. Yeah. So yeah. They, I, and, and are we in that league? Of course not. 
Yeah. We don't Interesting. How are we in that Who league, the I'm trying to figure out how you thought we were part of no, that league. No, that's, that's what I'm pointing out. Okay. All the players were the fans. Look, look a certain way, mm-hmm. and they're governed by the morality clause. Right. But the people who, quote, own them yeah. are not. They make I just think rules. that's, yeah. again, that's something we need to discuss. Mm-hmm. We, we'll discuss it now. That would be the time to discuss well, it. Well, and I'm saying we, again, we as Americans, I think we get our news right, and if, if uh, you know, name a newscaster, it comes out of their mouth. Oh, it's the Sean gospel. Sean <laughs> He's not a newscaster. Yeah, that's he's he's a, let, let's he's say more he's like an, an analyst or, a, or an opinion host. maker. Well, yeah. Right. yeah, a lot of people perceive but, him to be. But if Brian Williams or Martha Radich or uh, you know, just name them. If if any of them say it, it's the gospel truth. Oh well, you know that's. But we go by that. For example. He punched his girlfriend, and it's terrible, and he should go to jail. Mm-hmm. We go by that, and we it, it stops there. Again, there's no conversation. There's no... One new media expression on me brings you a repeat broadcast of On Me Sunday Mornings from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. every Sunday, followed by live radio with Valley Black Talk Radio from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. on 1680 a.m. Here's every Sunday from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. on 1680 a.m. One new media expression on me. MPTV can now be watched on TV anytime through our Roku channel or on your computer online at amptvnow.com. Better yet, go mobile, live.amptvnow.com. Back to the topic at hand that we were talking about, and uh, politics and money, how it all correlates, and we were also talking about the power of voting. And if we do not, with African Americans, are usually stuck with one power uh, party, you know, between the two parties for a number of years. Instead of just saying, okay, which party right now is doing its, or I don't even want to say party, which person our best representative interest. is actually our in the best interest, interest of, there we go. Yeah, that's what we need. That's to what they should And that, that's, that's going to be the challenge that we have over the next few years is to uh, get folks to understand that you have to vote your interest rather than vote a party. Well, because, and I'm ahead. sorry for interrupting, yeah. but also get folks to know there are more than two parties. Right. We don't have to pick between them and them since they're basically two sides of the same coin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's a lot of other parties and mm-hmm. you need to investigate. Besides left and right. Well, don't investigate. Yeah. Tell them, Joel. Well, there's peace and freedom. Mm-hmm. There's green. green. There's libertarian. I'm not sure. Yeah. About independent there's party independent. is not the same as independent. Yeah. Yeah. Being a person that's independent mm-hmm. that's not picking a particular but party. You, right. can't pick, the, you can't check a box on the, on the voter registration uh, box for that explanation, though. Okay. When you vote independent, there's a party that represents the independent party. So if you're independently voting versus being a part of the independent party, you have to, that's what you're saying. Yeah, you're, you're like I did. And what I did was when I registered, re-registered after mm-hmm. several years, I just simply put, decline the state. Mm-hmm. Which means I want to know who's going to bring me the best game. That's mm-hmm. who I'm going to go with. You got something for me? I'm, I'm going to hear both sides. Mm-hmm. Or all sides. Just to bring me what, what, what it is that you think. It's going to be of interest to me. Mm-hmm. Or listen to me and let me share with you what I need, what I believe I need in my community. And if that's if, 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 if we can we can come to some kind of understanding, then my job is to go out and influence as many people as possible to support you because these are the things that you say you support that will, will support my community. And I think that's uh, a lot of that is what's missing right now. We're mm-hmm. so entrenched in the party, the mm-hmm. party, the party. Man, and I, I could tell you some horror stories about the party that our community has been so in love with for the last 50 years and how they have just totally devastated uh, our community. And what are they supporting if you're looking at that dominant party and we're looking at what organizations are they supporting? What African American media are they supporting? Mm-hmm. I know on our end we can say zero. Mm-hmm. I'll yeah. just say that. Exactly. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, because they don't see a value. See, mm-hmm. and, and part of that is our responsibility too mm-hmm. because they have to see a value in. Uh, 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 Approaching us to say, look, we need to be, you know, we need to be connected with you folks because you have something you can bring to the table. Mm-hmm. See, politicians go to folks who can write the big checks, mm-hmm. or you can bring them the number of votes that they need. 
So since we're not uh, writers of big checks in most cases, we our job is to be, be able to consolidate our, our voices, our votes, and say this is what we want, can you help us with mm -hmm. this? Mm -hmm. And the politician that agrees with that, that's who we should be supporting. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what, what party you're affiliated with, it should be what can you deliver to our community. And then also, if you look at the African American community, as far as being able to come together, is showing the significance of what we can do to help whatever individual is coming to us, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Being able to show that there is an influence, because I know we keep saying we're only eight percent mm -hmm. looking here in the here. Central Valley. Mm -hmm. How? But that eight percent can be powerful, but we have not shown it. Yet. Exactly. That's what. That's How what are we going to do that? What we have to do that because if we don't, we already know the consequences of it. But just look at the history of it. Most elections especially in our area, are, are decided by a few votes. Mm -hmm. We can make up the difference in that few votes. So that's what we have to do. We have to utilize those numbers in order to get our voices heard. Mm -hmm. So locally now, because elections are coming up, you look at that, I mean, the time is coming. It's approaching mm -hmm. so quickly. Quickly. Very quickly. Which races should we be paying the most attention to? All of them. Okay. All of them need to be considered. You, well, okay, every but every politician needs to come before us and say, look, this, this is my plan, mm -hmm. or asked us, what would you like for me to do for you if I'm elected? Mm -hmm. Every politician should be asked that. We should not give anybody a pass. Everybody should be okay. brought to the table. And so that's what we're working on. Working but with. how do we get our community involved? Because not all of them vote or vote for all the different areas that they should be voting. Because we have to educate them. And programs like this, Valley Black Talk, that's mm -hmm. one of our responsibilities, is to make sure communities are informed about what's, what's, uh, what's out there, what's mm -hmm. in front of them. Mm -hmm. and, so, and where to go to get the information. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, some of them are, you know, and we have to, we have to, we have to do like the, the, the mainstream does. Mm -hmm. They simply, they know most people are not, don't have the energy or are willing to go out and do the research, right. so they simply give it to you. They summarize it. Well, and that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That's why we and other outlets mm -hmm. need to have a slate of candidates. You know, of here's who we, uh, you well, know, I don't know if I want to endorse. Here's oh, like the one endorse. coming up on the 25th and the 26th. Yeah, we do have one. Yeah, let me, let me, let me plug for that. We have one. Thank uh, you. The, the local chapter of the NACP, along with the West Fresno Ministerial Alliance, is hosting a candidates forum. And they're dealing with uh, primarily the education component of, of, of Fresno County here. And they're going to be asking those, those questions that should be asked. And some of them have never been asked to some mm -hmm. of the candidates. And so after that, I think we'll have a real clear picture of who we'd like to support. Because I think Valley Black Talk is going to be a part of that whole discussion. And we're certainly going to be there to, to view all of this and see what's going on. And hopefully, AMPTV will not, be it's there. It's not hopefully. We already said that. Well, I'm yes. <laughs> Put me on the spot on the air with those hope things. I never told you hope. I said we were going to do it. Okay. Well, I know you're busy. Because you, even I, just yesterday, I heard you say, about, talking about some things that are on the same dates. And I'm saying, wow, this lady here, how's she going to pull all this off? Well, I she told you I was at a fish fry, and then I came here. I believe so that I, I have I, seen Julia in two places at the same time. At, at the same time. Oh, my so goodness. Yeah. I don't know how she does it, but I, I believe I have. So these will be open to the public. They'll be open to the public. Okay. They'll be held on the 25th of uh, September mm -hmm. uh, at the Witness of Jesus Christ Church. It's located at 2519 South Elm. It'll be a, a, a Thursday. Uh, yes, a Thursday and a Friday. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, Thursday and a Friday, mm -hmm. 25th and 26th. It'll start at 6 p.m. Probably end up about eight, but you know, if some of the politicians want to, you know, linger around and answer some personal questions to the folks, we'll be around to make sure that happens for them. But uh, this is the opportunity that we need to take to really kind of, uh, uh, you know. And who's all on the panel, so people have an idea? Uh, in terms of who? The panelists? Oh, you, no, I don't have my list with me. No, you, you don't to... need to have a list. You should know who they are. Uh, your head. I'm, 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 I'm I know Eric Payne, he's supposed to be one. Yeah, he's going to be a panelist. We have uh, a couple of students, yeah, about mm -hmm. four high school students. Mm -hmm. We have uh, some pastors. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, I know the, the local president of the NACP is going to be one on, on, on the panel. Mm -hmm. And, um,. And you gave me this. I can't read this. I oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. I forgot. Help us out. We're the other panelists. Well, and I want, so it'll be primarily. Oh yeah, and and and, and uh, Jewel's going to be on the panel. So yeah. you know we're going to have. <laughs> that mouthy thing. Yeah. 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 I thought you didn't know it was going to be in the panel. Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, so it'll be primarily candidates running for Fresno Unified and for State, State Center Community College colleges, and also the county, board, county, uh, board the county Board, County Board of County Board of Education. And there are two, this is something that I think is extremely important, too, that we, we normally overlook. 
uh, when it comes to the part of the ballot that deals with the judges, mm -hmm. most people don't even vote in that category. That's an important Extremely section. Important. I don't know why we skip that over. Because all of our families are, are affected by And then when we're in that. court, we realize, and, oh, and we, yeah. how does this person get Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Who so, am I going under? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this time around, we're going to have... We're, don't they vote him the hanging judge? It's about time. <laughs> <laughs> you see? Yeah, yeah that's why it matters. True. Exactly. It matters a big before, But you got to be... Paying attention oh, yeah. before, <laughs> and I don't know why we've never paid attention to that because that's what because we act on emotion. Most of our community acts on emotion. That we don't so think true. it through, uh -huh. and so if we think about it, we can come to a logical explanation or conclusion as to what actions we need to take. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, we're so emotional because of the situation, and we have a lot of things that, that face us as a community. So some of it is justified, but at the end of the day. The responsibility is ours to make sure we do the homework, do the heavy lifting to find out who. Is going to be the best people to represent us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are we going to talk about who we? Yes. Hope will be there. Yeah. Oh, please, yes. yes. Yeah. Please do that. Uh, Debbie Darden. Mm -hmm. she and she's is... with who? Who? who, who this, this this candidate's or uh, mm -hmm. what? What? Uh, they this represent? is uh, Fresno Unified. This district, is uh, Unified District Number One. Okay. Uh, Debbie Darden, Cal Johnson, and Christensen L. Fleming. Mm -hmm. They're uh, the candidates for District Number One, mm -hmm. and. Let's see. Then also Fresno Unified District Number Three, Valerie F. Davis and Esmeralda Diaz, mm -hmm. and for Fresno Unified Number Four, I'm uh, sorry, Number Seven, Fresno Unified District Number Seven, Brooke Ashtian. I hope I'm saying that right, Ashtian. So we'll. Uh, we'll You'll correct us when he comes in. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Ruben Martinez. That's Fresno Unified District Number Seven. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh, I don't have the state center, folks. Mm -hmm. But, uh, well, you have what, Dottie have Smith and yeah. Miguel, is it Adias? I don't know, I don't know if that's his last yeah. name. Okay. But yeah. they're, they're about, they're, they're, I think there are seven candidates that are going to be uh, uh, running for state center community college district. So, no, that's four, just four. No, it's yeah. just four. Yeah, like four. seven? No, yeah, it's yeah, just the four. four seats. Right. My question really is, what do school board members and the state center uh, board, mm -hmm. what do they govern? Why do we care who's in that seat? Do they govern how education funds are spent? Do they govern policy in the schools or on the college campuses? Mm -hmm. What are they over? What do the board members do? You know what? Uh, you asked a very good question. And I could answer that, but I don't want to help them out. Oh, oh, there you go. I want people to come there and tell us. You give them the answer. Let me make a note of that so I can put it on my question. If they do not know, if you have an example of, if you have a representative from the Fresno Unified, mm -hmm. and if they're telling you they're just here to educate the kids, as an example, mm -hmm. are you going to correct that? I'm sure that the, the, the panel will be very well informed as to how to ask the questions. But, uh, you know, do your homework if you're going to be on the panel. Be, come prepared. Don't come... Let me, I'll give you this much. <laughs> Don't come with your traditional answers because those traditional answers are not probably going to be challenged. So yeah. Yeah, just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Be prepared when you get there. But no, I'm not going to give you the answer. I know the answer. <laughs> but I'm not going to give it to you. And, and, and people would have to go back and look at the archives for him to be on these Sunday mornings where he did explain that. But oh, now, but see, you told them. Now they're gonna go back and no, I don't want to give the hands up like that. Let them come there and be natural. Let me see but what you see. Let's see how well they know on their own. Let's yes. Check the archives. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, actually, it, it's it's good. Uh, hopefully, the listeners will go to yes, the archives. Yes, that's so you will know when they are giving you mm -hmm. that answer. You know, it's amazing how politicians can talk for fifteen minutes and, and not answer nothing. the question. Yeah, not yeah. yeah. So they're excellent at that. The audience be listening. Have your sharp ears on. So you can say, wait a minute, he still didn't answer the question. Because mm -hmm. as a panelist, I will say, uh, you didn't answer the question. I, I like that you're a panelist. I'm not going to like about it. I like that power hit is like you're a panelist. Answer the question. Yeah, yeah, you can bring it back. Well, uh, we're still waiting on that answer. But we'll be polite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state, this may be the most important phone call you'll ever make. I owed $50,000 in taxes, but listen. Your tax problem is settled. You only owe $8,400. What a great message. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state, then you owe it to yourself to call this number. Let our experts help guide you through the process of negotiating a tax settlement. Call this number or go to tax10,000.com. Him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it have been that long. So okay, so 
with local politics, we kind of, at least we explain to people why it's important they get involved at the mm -hmm. local level. Yeah, they have to be there. They got to be there. State level too, you have right? No, you have no right to complain if right. you don't participate. Tell the truth. Well, but see, now, this leads into a whole other section of blacks and political action discussion okay. because, you know, another thing we need to be working on mm. is restoring voting rights, right? Mm -hmm. That's why so mm -hmm. many black men get, and black women for that matter, but there's especially a war on black men, mm -hmm. get picked up for selling uh, cigarettes individually, mm -hmm. uh, right? Oh, yeah. right. Because no, as soon as, they, well, but as soon as you get out of jail, you're no longer a citizen. Mm -hmm. I mean, in effect, right? Because to me, what, a citizen yeah. has the right to vote. Mm -hmm. uh, but see, in California, that's, that's not quite true. Once you've paid your debt, you But can, California you is one state, yeah, and right. California right. doesn't even have the largest African American population. Okay, I, right? I agree. So I agree. Go ahead. all Jill. across the South, yeah, you're right, and the other states that do not restore voting rights to felons easily, right. and some not at all. Yes, we need to change that. We all of us, whether we live in California or what, we all Alabama. need to yeah. be advocating to have that law changed. Mm -hmm. Once you have paid your debt to society, you ought to get to vote. Yeah, I agree with that, one hundred percent. Because you're affected by everything that voters do. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you need to be a part of that to have your voice heard. And I don't see how you can call a person a citizen or expect them to behave as a citizen if they don't have voting rights. Mm -hmm. If you don't have any voice in the way your country is run, even if they don't listen to you, at least you've got to vote. Right. If you don't have any voice, I, I don't see. You expect me to pay taxes? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh-uh. You better give me the vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we'll talk about D.C. some other time. <laughs> yeah, Eleanor. North. What, what, Eleanor Holmes Norton. Norton. Yes. Yeah. She has been. Yeah, she's been there, but she can't vote. I know. And wow. that just makes no sense at all. Yeah. Wow. Washington, D.C. Wow. Citizens who live there can't get a representative. Hmm. That has a voice in the United States Congress. Wow! I think everybody ought to move out of D.C. Yeah. Oh, what would happen if they all move somewhere else? <laughs> Someone's right. gonna lose a lot of money. That happens. Oh, ah, there we go. Yeah. Money and finance. yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. The finance. I'm, I was just thinking in terms of voting, but yeah, money is political power. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know that because Citizens United, mm -hmm. which hopefully they will be turning around pretty soon. Citizens United. Is that? Uh, uh, Oh, that's the, oh oh yes. That's, that's the one that makes corporations just like you and I. Okay, yeah, they can they can speak and and, and there's no limit to how loud they can mm. speak. Yeah. I mean, I know you know you or I we could outspend Walmart, but oh really? <laughs> a lot of companies oh, oh, oh. can't. A lot, yeah. lot of folks can't. Well, uh, let me uh, newsflash that can I had the back, back buried in the backyard. Mm -hmm. It's gone. Uh oh. <laughs> so, so I take it back. <laughs> we can't so, outspend. I'm just picking. Uh, it could be any corporation in America. Right, I'm right. just saying I don't think corporations should be able to be treated as people, as individuals. So in in the in the in the local political races that are going on, education is a very very uh, as we stated before, a very important component of that because our kids, you know, without. Uh, the, the kind of education that makes us competitive uh, are destined to do what they've been doing in terms of turning to alternative ways to, to generate uh, money. So I think it's important that we, we have a part in this whole piece of who's going to be sitting on these school boards and understanding their responsibilities as to, as to why they're sitting there. And then the judges, it's important too that we know what kind of judge is sitting there. Do they, do they believe in... Uh, 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 Alternative sentencing? Do they uh, are, are are they about fairness or mm -hmm. are they strictly about uh, three strikes and you're out? Mm -hmm. And those questions need to be raised to them because, you know, a lot of times they'll say what they think is politically expedient. See, and that is a little bit of the problem I have with the whole voting thing. Of course, people are going to tell you what they believe you mm -hmm. want to hear during election time, mm -hmm. and then you vote for them, and it's a whole other thing. So. It, it, but see, know, George, the same, the same thing that makes you laugh can make you cry. Mm -hmm. Because wow. you, you can get there, but the same people who put you there can pull you out. Yeah, it's work, but mm -hmm. all you have to do it is one time. Mm -hmm. And the message gets to everybody that, whoa, wait a minute. These people will recall me, and they understand the process. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't take, you know, the formula is, is, is different in terms of recall. You don't, you don't need the entire uh, city population to do that. You. Yeah, but I don't think recall. people know the power of recall because a lot of politicians, at least I can say in this city, are very comfortable. Well, ex well, in this they city, get a little yeah, bit comfortable. But you better make sure you can recall. But otherwise, citizens, our citizens don't understand the power of recall or the well, purpose. 
But and, and, get emotional. Okay. It's it's an option, but right, they spent all that money to try and recall Scott Walker, tore up Wisconsin. Oh yeah, yeah. And he wasn't recalled. Why? So, well, that's what I'm saying. You you need to make sure. Yeah, you you have to understand as sure all as you the can be. Of your, you know, why that, you're fighting and that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. But he's in a. And sometimes you do things in, in that, those kinds of situations. Sometimes you do things uh, to stimulate what you're getting ready to do later. Okay. Because uh, my understanding is he's in a real tough race now to be reelected for governor. Okay. So uh, I think they laid so the foundation. Sometimes, okay. Yeah, they did it's that the to, yeah, to build it so that we will involved. be able to get him down the road. And he's, it's all kinds of things that are happening to him now. You know, he he may be indicted soon. So there's some, you know, a lot of a lot of politics. Is there a morals going. clause for politicians? <laughs> oh, oh, I know oh, there's moral. Moral. <laughs> <laughs> now, now check moral that. Clause. Let's look at the balance. There's a moral clause for the NFL players only, uh -huh. but none for politicians. What if we had? A, I guess if we had right. a moral Nobody clause for politicians, there wouldn't be any. Nobody would run. Yeah, that's a moral clause for politicians. There would yeah, there wouldn't be any. Well, you do, but it's called uh, the vote, the ballot box. Yeah, I don't know about that. You don't like him? Canada, that seemed to be a problem up there. Why not? He was supposed to be. Oh, they like him, though. They like him. Yeah. Well, see, again, that's why there should be no arbiter but the law. Because the man may have been smoking crack, but apparently his constituents were happy he was doing his job well. I suppose. So. There was a guy named Dan Rostenkowski, I believe is how you pronounce his name. He was a congressman from Illinois. Well, wait, wait, hold that thought, because after the break, we'll hold okay. that story, okay. right, okay. and then we have our final comments, and it'll be the last five minutes of the, of, of the program. Oh, so wow. Says, I just want One new media expression, On Me, brings you a repeat broadcast of On Me Sunday mornings from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. every Sunday, followed by live radio with Valley Black Talk Radio from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. on 1680 a.m. Here's every Sunday from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. on 1680 a.m. One new media expression, On Me. MPTV can now be watched on TV anytime through our Roku channel or on your computer online at amptvnow.com. Better yet, go mobile, live.amptvnow.com. And we are back. You're watching On Me Sunday Mornings. My name is Julia Dudley Najib along with Lennis Najib. And we just got through watching that excerpt of Valley Black Talk Radio. Like we said, we we're having a good time on yes, the air. It was good. And getting a chance to reacclimate ourselves of being on radio. I like TV, but I really love radio. Yeah, radio is a way you can express yourself a lot longer. You can talk, you can have fun, and it's you know, it's 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 fun. So. Yeah, we want people to be engaged in those topics. And again, if you uh, missed last week, we'll be having that online. And if you want to, ever want to watch it live on your mobile, you ever want to just listen to it maybe on your computer, you can go to 1680am.amptvnow.com. 1680am.amptvnow.com. I guess we should get into our first black news headline mm -hmm. that's been hitting, um, and, and this would be very relevant. And this particular issue and this is according to the black lawyers have a plan to attack um, police brutality. Mm. They've chosen 25 cities for them to pull up all these reports. And those 25 cities, or here's a couple of those cities mm. you might be familiar with. Of course, Washington, D.C., Miami, Los Angeles is one of them, mm -hmm. Atlanta, Chicago, Baltimore, Detroit, St. Louis, Charlotte, New York City, Philadelphia, and Houston. Why these cities? And also bring them. Uh, Birmingham. Why these cities, you think? Because mm. it is the most populated with the African-American um, populations. They took mm -hmm. the highest out of those cities and the incidents, the highest incidents of police brutality. Mm. So my question is, do you see, I mean, what would be the next step? All this is going to the attorney general, of course, Eric Holder, mm -hmm. who's going to be reviewing these cases, but what to do? How do you reopen these cases? Well, what they're doing right now is they're looking at um, the African Americans in those pre predominant area, city areas and they're trying to find a solution to how they can figure out how to deal with the crime rate, mm -hmm. the, the situation that's concerning the African Americans right now. 
But it's police brutality that we're dealing with. So, for instance, when the, the last year, I think the incident was in Detroit, the mm -hmm. two young men that were asked for their ID, and, and we're going to see, we're going to talk about another case yes. just recently, that mm -hmm. same thing happened. They were asked for their ID last year, last September, we heard this reported on, and they were just walking into a restaurant, and mm -hmm. they were accosted by the two cops because they're like, well, why do you want to know where our ID is? Why do you need my ID? And mm -hmm. luckily, there was video to exonerate them, or else they would have been locked up. Mm, wow, that's... That's unheard of. I mean, he ended up in a scuffle, and that was last year's incident. And the, I know that the issue with that is they didn't want to report it because they felt the cops, um, you know, they, they learned their lesson. And mm -hmm. uh, they, you know, I, I almost feel like with situations like that, they should take it a step further but what, so that it what, won't keep happening. That was last but year. But why, why are the cops are harassing more of African Americans in those particular cities? Why? Because there's more of us there, or there's um, the crime rate, or... Mm -hmm. I can imagine the police job in itself is pretty difficult I'm sure in itself it is. and sometimes dealing with maybe African American people to a certain level mm -hmm. is very difficult as well but to just harass and go beyond their it's duties. It's becoming a problem. Yes, it seems It's like really it becoming a problem. So much of a problem that one of the other things I wanted to bring up, which mm -hmm. is relative to this situation, is that there was a Django Unchained actress, even though oh, she yes. played a minor role, mm -hmm. a Danielle Watts. Yes. So she was kissing her white husband in public, not, nothing indecent, just showing an affection, fully clothed. So someone called the cops on them mm -hmm. and, and said that, you know, this white man was with a hooker. <laughs> so the cops came up to, and this is serious, this really happened, mm -hmm. uh, Studio City, Southern mm -hmm. California. Mm -hmm. And she was mistaken for a prostitute, and the cops claimed that there was indecent, expo you know, that they were out in the public and they were very indecent, and they were in a, some white guy in a Mercedes is basically picking up this hooker. Mm -hmm. So the cops came, two cops, two cop cars came, and they accosted her, and they said, let me see your ID. She said, what for? Once again, we, she just asked the question, what do you need my ID for? So she asked, what do you need my ID for? And the cops said, you know, take out your ID. And she refused to take her ID because she wanted to know, why do you need my ID? And the next thing she knows, she's in the back of a police car. Now, how long did they d detain her? Well, she's in there for, what, I heard. It doesn't matter. It's the fact that she was in the back of a police car, uh -huh. went to the station, Mm -hmm. And they couldn't do anything, book her or anything, because she didn't do anything. The whole experience is they, humiliating. I know they did an investigation on the situation. I know that they found... That I don't know if you want to call that as investigation, but nothing. this is what she says in her quote, and then she put it on Facebook. Okay. That's how upset she was when she was detained. Her quote said like this. She said, today I was handcuffed and detained by two police officers from the Studio City Police Department after refusing to agree that I had done something wrong by showing affection, fully clothed in a public place. And that's what Watts wrote, and um, she put this on her. Oh, she's also um, not only the she played one of the slaves in the Django movie, but she's also stars in FX show Partners. So you look at Daniel Watts and her situation. You were talking about her dad. Are you about to go into that about yeah, her the, father? Yeah, the humiliation that he experienced and that she expressed um, when stopped by the cops and deteriorating his um, will or his image mm -hmm. is. Um, very, very upsetting to himself as he would come home and express, and she would look at his her father's um, face mm -hmm. and wonder what's wrong with him. Mm -hmm. And now she experienced a taste of that when she had to deal with the cops and and her boyfriend, our husband um, situation. Right, and I think the husband even responded. I mean, I guess that would only be right to respond to mm -hmm. uh, um, all the anger and just. Like showing a kiss and they were fully clothed that's got to be frustrating right? oh yes i can imagine i can imagine he says whoever called on us including the officers um, saw a tatted rocker white boy and a hot booty shorted black girl and believed them to be a prostitute and client he later said the officers never directly said they suspected prostitution but that their line of questioning led him to believe that <laughs> I feel insulted just by talking about this alone. Yes. You know, I, I'm I'm kind of upset about the situation myself. Yes. And I've gotten pulled over. I think I've talked about that in other segments. And when I lived in San Jose, California, and mm -hmm. I was just a young person then. I was 17 and just coming home. Mm -hmm. Coming home after a, a game, I had to drive home. So I can only imagine. And she's kissing her white husband. See, here we go with the white black thing. Well, How can we get away from well, it you, when stereotypes at, still exist? Like, well, you're this. looking at he's in a Mercedes Benz, mm -hmm. as they stated, and she is a, a, a very attractive black woman, mm -hmm. and he's a white guy. He said tattooed it up. Mm -hmm. So, in their mind, 
that might be some sort of... But that's, the, there we go with the stereotypes again. That's what yeah, I'm concerned but, about mm -hmm. when we're looking at, we keep saying we're trying to get rid of the white, black issues, but yet issues like this keep happening. Well, they're looking at them in the car and they're saying, oh, Oh, that makes it better. <laughs> well, there's, there's something going on over there, so let's call the police. It looked like some, you know, some business. In oh, there, gosh, so. I don't know. Well, after the break, we always have more news that we're going to be talking about. And we're going to take it from a different perspective because we know we like mm -hmm. the show Shark Tank. Yes. So we want you to keep that in perspective. Shark Tank, entrepreneurs, um, what, what does all that have in common? Oh, 10 year old. So Shark Tank, entrepreneurs, 10 year old, what does all that have in common? So after the break, you'll have to find out. You're watching On Me Sunday Mornings. So we'll be right back. <laughs> One new media expression, On Me, brings you a repeat broadcast of On Me Sunday mornings from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. every Sunday, followed by live radio with Valley Black Talk Radio from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. on 1680 a.m. Here's every Sunday from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. on 1680 a.m. One new media expression, On Me. And we are back. You're watching On Me Sunday Mornings. My name is Julie Dudley Najib, along with... Lennis Najib. So we know we like the show Shark Tank. I love the show, especially Mr. Wonderful. He's my Yeah, favorite. that's like our date night, going to go watch Shark Tank. No. But the reason why is because... Why do you watch Shark Tank, first of all? I enjoy watching Mr. Wonderful tear him up. You know, okay. He rips him up. And, all right. Um, I enjoy Kevin. Also, I enjoyed um, FUBU. Um, Fubu person also. Mm -hmm. um, Damon. Damon. Damon John. So <laughs> I couldn't think of his name. For us, but, by us, Fubu. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just enjoyed watching um, the show. Do mm -hmm. you think that it's too much of a pipe dream? Is it take them out of realism? Because a lot of the time people say, hey, if I just get on Shark Tank, I can make all this money. If I could just, if I could just, if I could just. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I know some people that went um, to Los Angeles to mm -hmm. appear on Shark Tank, and they waited there for over 48 hours, mm -hmm. you know, in the lines. And it's, it's really unrealistic. You know, they go through the process uh, to try to get on Shark Tank, mm -hmm. and a lot of them trying to get loans. They desperately need loans mm -hmm. to help their business. Endeavor. So it's reasonable as to understanding why they're doing it, but what's yes. not reasonable is looking at the hard part of being an entrepreneur is taking it day by day and taking the engine. Sometimes you're like, oh, how am I going to pay this? Somehow it's going to work out, right? Yes, every and day. I, and not everyone can be an entrepreneur. No. Not everyone can be that. And so you have this 10-year-old. Meet the 10-year-old CEO of mm -hmm. what is it called? Mr. Corey's Cookies. Yes. And I think this is an incredible story because you have a, a, a young boy who had a dream and to be able to have natural cookie dough. Mm -hmm. And using this natural cookie dough, he used to do hot cocoa and lemonade at the age of five wow. on the corner in Inglewood, Inglewood, New Jersey, selling these hot cocoa and cookies. I mean, yeah, yeah, the cookies. And so the line of cookie has been growing in popularity, but look, it took over time because mm -hmm. now this kid is now 10 years old, CEO, it's in markets, it's online, it's in all these different places. Well, when people look at the 10 year old, they looking at, oh, I can do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's easy. Because a 10 year old can do it. Because if a 10 year old can do it, I can do it. <laughs> and it's Mind not. Mind this 10 year old is also a model. This 10 year old does other things in life. Yes. So um, he's. He's found a niche, mm -hmm. he found an avenue to where he can be successful, and he found the right backing. What I see is a lot of people look for the easy way out, well, if this person did it, I can do it, and so I'm going to find a way to do what they did. Mm -hmm. And then we try to either take over what they did, not realizing that that entrepreneur's probably done that for the last 10 years, yes. trying to perfect it. You always bring up Albert Einstein, how many times he had to go through and perfect oh his experiment, right? Yes, he went through so much trying to find out the, the eclipse and looking at different um, strategies and, mm -hmm. and going over and over and tearing the paper up right. and, and to the point where he accidentally stumbled to the solution. Right. So it's it's the same way. And sometimes it takes that. I know in, you know, here we're at Cafe Aroma where we film. Uh, this wasn't an easy business for us and no. we didn't expect it. And there's so many different challenges and changes. And, you know, I know we've talked to Don Preyal Martin, who's also an entrepreneur. And I don't think 
You know, I think if all of us entrepreneurs got together to actually help realize that and work together, we'd probably find a big, at least looking at the Central Valley, we'd probably find a bigger vision. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Tate Hill, the, Fres the Fresno Metro Black Chamber of Commerce president, talked about how companies work together, they mm -hmm. collaborate, and there's more money that way. Yes, there's plenty of money that way. When you collaborate, you're using not only the money, but you're using their talents, you're mm -hmm. using resources. Um, in every areas where you never think possible that there there is, mm -hmm. so we have to now in this economy situation um, collaborate more, and a lot of other major companies are collaborating. Yeah, and as well. so I, I'm looking at that, you know, and I'm looking at you know comments that were said about because uh, we're doing some new part or facet of our business on one mm -hmm. of our other businesses, and so when I, someone asked me, oh well, how are you doing that? I want to get on in on that too, and I'm thinking. <laughs> Here we years it took for me to get to this point, uh -huh. or people see like a, some of our friends that are very successful in mm -hmm. niche areas, and either they come at them for money, or this person should fund my project because they have money and I have an idea, so I mm -hmm. should be able to get funded. But they never think about well, how did that person get their money in the first place? They're not mm -hmm. trying to go spend it out unless it's a really good, smart investment. Well, some people don't even have a business plan. Yeah, you know, I've some seen people that. don't have <laughs> have any any marketing level of skills mm -hmm. or anything or how to do a business. Or some all. people have a great idea and that's all it is. Yeah, just an idea. A dream, an idea, which goes nowhere until you put action into it. Yes, yeah. and finances as well. So I'm glad that at least the last story we end on is Mr. Corey's Cookies. We have to get Mr. Corey's Cookies, right? Yes, I'm going to try it. <laughs> you know, and the fact that they're sold online, so we got to try this out because this is a young entrepreneur and you see five years. It took five years for him to get to this point and he's only 10. So I just want to tell people. Can you imagine <laughs> what he'll be like in the next 10 years? Yeah, he's already working towards it. He's got big I mean, dreams. Wow. Big if dreams, he's big ideas. At this, at five and 10 years old, mm -hmm. can you imagine what he's going to be when he's 30 or 40? Of course, of course. So, mm -hmm. I, and I'm saying that to say he started at five and yes. now he's 10. Yes. It just wasn't overnight. People look at things sometimes in the news, they think that it's overnight. Mm -hmm. And I don't want people to feel that entrepreneur or doing your business is going to be overnight. No. You might have some great breaks overnight. Mm -hmm. You might have um, you know, an epiphany overnight. You might have someone that says, hey, I want to help you. You're an entrepreneur. I want to make help you get to the next level overnight. Yes. But sometimes success does not come overnight, even though it appears that way. Yes. So I think I just wanted to bring that up about Shark Tank because, I, I, again, I heard someone saying, I just need to get my product on Shark Tank. If I can get it on Shark Tank, I, I'll blow up, I'll explode. But there's other ways to do that. There's other ways to explode and get to that next level. I think you bring up an interesting point. I know Mark Cuban, he mm -hmm. started back with the stamps mm -hmm. at, the, at an early age. And look at what he is, a billionaire. Right. So anybody, it can happen for anybody. Right. And after the break, we're going to tell you about our book of the month. And guess what? It involves Bill Cosby. Mm. So you want to stay tuned. We're going to be wrapping up final comments. You are watching Ami Sunday Mornings. We'll be right back, right after the short break. One new media expression, On Me, brings you a repeat broadcast of On Me Sunday mornings from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. every Sunday, followed by live radio with Valley Black Talk Radio from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. on 1680 a.m. Here's every Sunday from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. on 1680 a.m. One new media expression, On Me. Welcome back to On Me Sunday Mornings. My name is Julia Deli Najib, along with... Lennis Najib. And we're just wrapping up our final comments. And this mm -hmm. segment was jam-packed. We had from Valley Black Talk Radio showing its segment back on the 1680 AM or back on the airwaves. Mm -hmm. And we had some really good topics out of the black news headlines, especially with the 10-year-old teaching us about business, entrepreneur, and what it takes. And you know what the most important part about the 10-year-old that we learned in business? He, ha he was having fun at what he did. Yeah, he really enjoyed it. Cookies. He found something that he really liked, cookies. So you just got to find something you really like, really enjoy, mm -hmm. and pursue it. Don't go after it for the money. Because if you do, you'll be very unhappy and things will look a little funny. I just want to add that in there. Okay. So our book of the month, you'll like this. It's Cosby, Life, and Times. And Cosby, Life, and Times is a book by journalist Mark Whitaker. 
He's the author of the new book who went through hard times in his own life and looked to Bill Cosby as a role model as he was growing up because he didn't have a father figure. And yeah, okay, we usually you know, steer our kids away from looking at TV icons as a role model, but if you look at Bill Cosby's life, he himself went through some hard times. And so Whitaker talks about it in this new book that's coming out. And there's a long, extensive interview that was in theroot.com where he said, he said, obviously I knew there was a much more complicated figure behind the genial, sweater-wearing America's dad. I thought nobody had really explored that in great depth. And I thought somebody should. Since nobody had done it, I thought I would. And we know that Bill Cosby, the famous comedian, famous actor, and has oftentimes been criticized for the comments that he said uh, to the American public. But overall, he still is an icon. And the fact that he went through his own trials and tribulations with his own father and his own family, um, it, it'll just be an interesting read. Yes, I know his son, his son passed away. And this gives some more of an insight to what he's showing. Sure. And so we're hoping people will check that book out. In fact, Cosby talks about how he grew up in Philadelphia housing projects. And um, he was the son of an alcoholic, largely absent father, and but a loving but overworked mother. We hear this time and time again. So, and the reason why I want to bring that point up is a lot of times we'll say, well, I had this, we'll make those excuses in our life. How can we possibly make those excuses in our lives when we see people that have made it past those odds? Yes, that is a very rich story. I didn't myself know that he had such a uh, dysfunctional family background. To see how he is now and mm -hmm. the success that he uh, accumulated over the years, I had no idea that that was going on with him. He had to make his way to college. He went to the Navy first and then made his way through college to uh, finding his break as a startup comedian. Wow. So he wow. found a way. Where there's a way, there is a will. And maybe that's what we should remember. And so that's our book of the month, and we hope that people check that book of the month out. It is on our website at amptvnow.com. And so I, you know, this was an exciting program for God, me because I was. Went it went by fast. It always does. We never know when the time just runs out. That's wow. the way it is on Omni Sunday mornings. But that's okay because you can tune into the radio portion of, that's coming tonight and listen into 1680am.amptvnow.com mm -hmm. if you're in the valley. Some gospel. And you can hear you some can gospel. Hear some gospel. You'll be able to see gospel. no gospel. Yeah. And so you'll be able to hear that segment with myself, Joel Riversmith, that 9 to 10 o'clock hour. Again, 8 to 9 is a repeat of On Me Sunday Mornings. And then 9 to 10, you have the uh, myself and Joel. And from 10 to 12, it's me, Joel, and Mel with some gospel in between some news. Really oh, exciting good. stuff. Yes. So we like to thank our audience, and we want them to have a great week. Thank you for watching On Me Sunday Mornings. This is uh, Julia Dudley Najib and Lena saying, make it big, make it happen, big, big, big. and say something good to somebody. That's what I want to say. We got to start saying that, ending our quotes like that. Have a good week. Mm -hmm.